All right, uh, thank you all for joining in. Um, so we'll have uh, first of our guest lectures uh, this semester. Uh, we are very excited and happy uh, to have uh, two, uh, two researchers from National University of Singapore join us today. Um, so the presenter will be Leah Rufan uh, from National University of Singapore. She has some uh, very interesting papers uh, so far that she has on fishing. Uh, we as a research group uh, were very inspired by this work. So thank you for this research. And we're very excited to listen uh, to these presentations. And uh, we're also excited to have uh, Dr. Lane Yoon, uh, uh, one of uh, Leo's advisors, join in. So thank you so much for joining in, uh, Dr. Lane. And uh, yeah, the floor is uh, uh, yours, and uh, you can start the presentation. Oh, OK. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks, Paul Fanny, again, for giving us the opportunity to share what we have done so far. And uh, today, I want to share some of the research work we have done on fishing detection. The title of my presentation today is Catching Fishing by Looking at the Web Page Intention. Uh, as mentioned by Prof. Fanny, my name is Suo Fan from National University of Singapore. And my supervisor is Prof. Dong Jin Song. I'm also co-supervised by Prof. Lin Yun. Today, Prof. Lin Yun also comes. So later in the discussion session, we can have a discussion. Uh, more about me is that I'm a second year PhD. My research interest is AI for cybersecurity. So the AI here in specific refers to the computer vision model. We apply computer vision techniques to tackle the security problems because the computer vision can provide explanations and it is intuitive for humans to understand. Uh, in the past two years, we have two publications on fishing detection. The first work is called Fishpedia. Second work is called Fish Intention. Today, I will uh, briefly go through those two works. Uh, I believe that uh, every one of us has at least once received a phishing email or phishing SMS. Uh, so phishing is quite relevant to our daily life and is prevalent all over the world. Just in Singapore alone, we can see news on fishing nearly every month. And each time is targeting for a different financial company. And in each campaign, the loss can be of millions of Singapore dollars. And worse still, the volume of fishing attacks is keep growing, especially during the global pandemic time during which people spend more time online. Uh, another reason for this increasing phishing attacks is that nowadays the phishing website creation can be fully automated. People can easily get a phishing kit uh, in social media or in the dark net. A phishing kit is like a template which prepares everything we need to deploy a phishing web page and it's the its category is quite refined. Uh, we can find different templates for office email online. So it actually lowers the barrier for launching a new phishing attack. So how phishing attack is actually conducted? Uh, let me first define what is phishing. Uh, phishing is a social engineering attack. Uh, so it tries to impersonate a benign target. It usually selects one of those uh, well-known companies such as Microsoft, uh, Meta, PayPal, and its objective is to steal users' credential. The first step is that the fisher, they will create a phishing website. Either they create themselves or they buy a phishing kit. Then they will be hosted on a server. Mm, they can have their own server or they can compromise one. After that, they will distribute the phishing link, eh, phishing link to the users via email, SMS, or social media. Then the user can click onto the link, follow the instructions on the web page, and submit their credentials. The credentials will be sent back to the fishers. With the credential, fishers can do many things. So phishing attack can be the starting point of a series of other kinds of tech. 
for example, the Fisher, they can transfer money to their account. They can deliver misinformation to other connected accounts, et cetera. Uh, in our study, we focus on the desktop version, browser-based phishing detection. So we serve as the browser service provider like Google Safari, where we can see the web page first before the user actually visit them. Then we can take them down if we think it's a phishing web page. So we don't focus on phishing email, uh, this kind of thing. We focus on the phishing web page. Hmm. Uh, in terms of how to detect phishing, the simplest way and also the most common one is to have an ever updating blacklist of phishing URLs. That is uh, what Google Safe Browsing Open Fish are currently doing. The drawbacks are uh, it heavily relies on users to report the suspicious web page. And according to a recent study, Fish Time, which is also published in Usenix, there is a, still a one hour delay from the time user reported until the time it actually appeared in the blacklist. And during this one hour, uh, Fisher can already make profit. And third thing, uh, it is easy to say that the blacklist can, can be easily obsolete. Like the blacklist works for yesterday will not work for tomorrow because a phishing might turn to benign, a benign might turn to phishing. Uh, if blacklist solution is not the way, is not the correct way to go, then I don't know why this screenshot becomes distorted. Yeah, never mind. Uh, then what, what about we do some feature engineering on HTML or URL? For example, we uh, detect the typos inside the URL. Then once we correct those typos, it can contain the uh, some organization names. But the fact is that features, they have full control of their domain, so they can change it to whatever they want. They can change it to be uh, X, Y, Z, or something irrelevant to the organization name. And in fact, more than half of the phishing domain names do not even mention the name of the target organizations. Uh, what about we do feature engineering on HTML? Uh, some of the previous researchers, they find that uh, phishing web page tend to be shorter, so they look at the length of the HTML. And also, phishing web page may use more external links than internal links. Uh, but those features are very easy to be bypassed. I can do, I can do HTML obfuscation without changing the rendered appearance of my web page. Also, it may have false positive problem because even for benign web page, they may possess the suspicious features we have. <clears throat> uh, I think I'm going to refresh the page. Uh, okay, uh, I think you can understand the picture at it's a Facebook version, so I just put it, I just leave it as here. Uh, so for the feature engineering based solution, uh, the first drawback is that features can easily evade the URL-based features and HTML-based detection easily. And the second thing is that it provides no, explan no explanation. Usually for this kind of solution, they give a binary prediction, either it's a phishing or a benign. Sometimes they will provide a classification score. For example, probability to be phishing is equal to 0.6. But why 0.6, not 0.7? There's no explanation. Human cannot understand 
why the model makes such a prediction. And third thing is that there's no prediction on the targeted brand. For example, if I'm only interested in PayPal phishing, uh, feature engineering based solutions have no control on that. Uh, to address the aforementioned issue, we propose a phishing detection solution. We call it Fishpedia. We let the robot to look at the web page and to infer its brand intention from its logo. Uh, uh, here, actually, there's a Facebook logo here. So we want to see which brand is targeting from the logo. Then it can output the prediction, whether it's phishing or benign. It can also predict the targeted brand. So firstly, it is robust because if the fisher they would like to change the visual appearance, user might also notice that they will raise some suspicion. Second thing, we provide explanation because we uh, highlight where is trying to fake other brands and we also output which brand is faking. Let me go into the details of our Fishpedia approach. Uh, actually, Fishpedia falls into the category of reference-based solution. In reference-based solution, we usually have a reference list for protected brands. For each protected brand, we record its real domain because we don't want to report the real domain as benign. And second thing is that we save its representation. The representation can be its logo or it can be the screenshot. In Fishpedia, we use logo. In some of the previous work, they use screenshot. Then given a testing set, if this representation can be if this representation can be matched with any of the reference, however, their domain do not align, then we will raise a phishing alarm. So prior to our work, there are three major existing solutions. Uh, called EMD, Fish Zoo, and Visual Fish Net. As for the first two works, they hard code the representation, like they use the color histogram to embed the screenshots, or they use a very old traditional computer vision method called SIFT to extract the features from screenshots. We find the representation extraction algorithm and representation matching algorithm they use are not very accurate. And a more recent work called FishNet, which is published in CCS 2020, they use convolutional neural network to embed the screenshots into some high dimensional embedding vector. But we find that the screenshot may contain a lot of noises. For example, uh, these two screenshots are reported as similar by visual FishNet. However, we can see uh, one is targeting for PayPal, the other one is targeting for at and So it's a false positive. On the other hand, if I have some uh, PayPal screenshots with other kind of color design, Visual FishNet cannot report similar for these two screenshots, although they're targeting for the same PayPal brand. So instead of using screenshot as representation, we choose to use logo as representation because we believe logo is more stable and is not likely to change frequently for a company. Uh, given a testing screenshot, our first step is to tell where the region, where the logo region is. So we formulate as an object detection problem to report the logo and copy it out. We adopt the off-the-shelf object detection model called Faster RCN. Then we will match the crop logo with the logos inside the reference list. Uh, we do local matching via metric learning network 
the metric learning network can be understood as a representation embedder, where if we have two similar images, then the two encodings will be closer. If we have the similar images, then the two encodings will be further away. Suppose X1 is my reference logo. And X2 is my testing logo. Then I will use the metric learning network to embed them into two encodings. Uh, the encodings is of low dimensional. So we can compute the similarity score either taking a dot product or the Euclidean distance. In our work, we use the dot product because it's between, between zero and one. So it's more intuitive for human to threshold and understand. Uh, if the testing logo X2 is similar to the reference logo, but their domain do not align, then we will raise a phishing alarm. Uh, just a recap. For Fishpedia, we have two networks. The first one is we report the logo location via faster RCN object detector. And second is we do logo matching via metric learning network. Uh, the contributions for our Fishpedia is first, we, uh, we have achieved high identification accuracy and low runtime overhead uh, thanks to the development of deep learning. And secondly, our system is explainable because we report the logo location. So we highlight where it's trying to fake another brand. It, it also report the matched brand with its similarity score. So instead of reporting a classification score, we report a similarity score. Mm. Thirdly, along with this work, we published the first large scale benchmark data set for 30K fishing including their URLs, HTML, and screenshots. Uh, but for Fishpedia, we do have some limitation. One problem is that it may have false positive. This website is a, is a news website, but it includes the Instagram logo for sharing the articles. Then it will be reported as an Instagram fishing according to our Fishpedia design. So that gives us motivation for our second work, Fish Intention. We think that the <coughs> screenshot and logo can only convey the partial web page intention. So we need to look for other strong indicators to tell that this is a fishing web page. Uh, we start with an empirical study on the 30K fishing we have collected we find that 86% of them are credential taking, means they take users' credential like here. The Outlook fishing, they let the user to key in their username and password. Uh, moreover, 11% of them are one level adjacent to the credential taking page. That means I need to click onto those login button, then I will be redirected to a credential requirement page. So we enhance Fishpedia by adding a, another intention, a credential taking intention on top of the brand intention. In addition, previously in Fishpedia, we only let the system to look at the screenshot which means we only do static analysis. But now in my fish intention, uh, I will also interact with the web page. So it's both static plus dynamic approach. To achieve such a goal, we put together four deep learning models. The first one is a web page representation extraction model where we try to extract the web page layout. We still treat it as an object detection task, uh, but aside from reporting the logo, you can see we also report the, the input, uh, the button, the text labels, etc. Uh, this is to prepare the materials for 
Later, we have a credential taken intention recognition model. A second model is a brand recognition. Uh, it is the same as the local matching in Fishpedia. Our third model is to uh, classify whether the web page is credential taking or not. So my input is a screenshot in RGB overlaid with the abstract web page layout output from model one. And it, they go through a deep learning classifier and output zero or one. Zero or one means it's credential taking or non-credential taking. Our fourth model is where the web page interaction comes in. Because the Fisher they might create layers of fishing website, so the landing page is not a credential taken, but we need to click in some login button to go to a credential taking. So we try to find such a button and click on to it. And once we enter the a uh, new credential requiring page we will repeat the model one, model two, and model three again. Uh, as for the experiment, we basically have five uh, research questions. Uh, RQ4 and RQ5 are more interesting ones, so I will briefly talk about them. Basically, RQ1 is to test the precision and recall on, on our experimental set. RQ2 is to check the performance of locating a credential requiring page from a non-credential requiring page. Uh, RQ3 is, since we have four deep learning models, so we check the performance of each component. Uh, RQ4 is to test the robustness for each deep learning model. We have designed three kinds of adversaries. The first one is the misleading legitimate page as an adversary. We collect around 3K misleading legitimate page, and they contain some sharing buttons of social media brands. Uh, the goal of having such a data set is that because they can compromise the existing logo-based approach. Our second adversary is HTML obfuscation as adversary. So we try to replace the logging related keywords inside the HTML form and also the URL. Uh, the our performance should be preserved because we heavily rely on computer vision. We don't rely much on the heuristics. And the third kind of adversary is the adversary attacks on deep learning models. Uh, there are many existing adversary attack methods. We just choose uh, five of them for classifier and one representat representative approach for object detection model. Uh, the basic idea is they try to perturb the screenshots such that the classification uh, or the region proposal changes. As for the misleading adversaries, uh, we look at the false positive rate on those misleading websites. Uh, in the graph, we look at the red bars. Uh, we can see that fish intention only incurs false positive rate of 5%, which is much lower than uh, the baselines. For the HTML and URL of obfuscation, you can see uh, the performance is largely preserved after the adversary attack compared to the baseline. A uh, baseline is uh, called X drivers published in CCS 2020. Uh, it relies on HTML keywords to detect the uh, credential taking form and also the credential taking transition buttons. As for the deep learning model adversary, the performance decreased a lot 
when we use the adversarial attack method specifically designed for deep learning models. But after we equip with some gradient masking defense methods, uh, our performance can be preserved. Uh, RQ5 is a fishing discovery experiment in the wild where we try to detect zero-day fishing web pages in the wild. Uh, to do that, we deploy a fishing monitoring system. We start with a third stream caller. Third stream is a service which provides fresh feeds for uh, newly registered domains every day. Then we crawl those web pages and store them in a database. We let the five solutions to process all those web pages. And they will report some phishing. We will send the reported results to a Telegram group where we have a uh, three security experts to individually manually verify whether they are real phishing or not. Our evaluation metric for the wild study is first we look at the number of real phishing divided by the number of reported phishing. Second, we count the number of zero-day phishing that is not reported by various total. Mm. Mm. So in our field study, we run the monitoring system for two months, starting from April 2021. In total, fish intention can report uh, 1.9K real fishing, where 1.3K are zero-day fishing. Uh, so we can see that fish intention also report the highest number of uh, real fishing and fishing not reported by virus total. Uh, one interesting phenomenon is that if we plot the distribution of targeted brands for the, those discovered phishing web page, we can find that the top five brands are uh, Microsoft, Meta, HSBC, Amazon, and Instagram. This aligns with our expectation. Uh, I have also uploaded some of the caught phishing in well study onto our phishing, uh, onto our Google website. If you're interested, you can check it out. Uh, as for the false positive and false negative incurred by phishing intention, uh, there are still some. Uh, here I present some of the examples. In this website, the logo looks very similar to Google, and also it has a contact form which requires user information. So it's reported as Google phishing by phishing intention. Here is another example. Because the logo looks similar to WhatsApp, and uh, our system cannot distinguish a search form with a credential taking form. So it is reported by phishing intention as a WhatsApp phishing. As for the false negative, uh, the main reason is that some websites, they, they require users to interact first, then show the phishing content. So our system currently cannot defend against this kind of client-side cloaking. Hmm. Uh, let me re-emphasize the contributions of our fish intention. The first day we look and interact with the web page to infer its brand intention as well as the credential taking intention. Second, we have experiments on its uh, uh, effectiveness, robustness, and usefulness, uh, both on the experimental data set and also on the field study. Thirdly, we implement our phishing monitoring system where we find that phishing intention can report the highest number of real day phishing with the highest precision. Uh, there are mainly two limitations. The first one is we, we cannot deal with the current side cooking page, such as the use of recapture and QR code scanning. Second thing is uh, because we rely on the logo intention, so we cannot deal with those phishing without a brand. Maybe there's some other intention we can find for this kind of phishing. Uh, as for the future work, 
the first possible direction is that uh, maybe in the future we can have some fission detection solution which can defend against cooking. Then we need to have some cooking, uh, cooking type classification and defense mechanism. But uh, overall it's a very challenging task because first thing is that the fishing website, they can do finger, fingerprinting. I think profiling is very familiar with this kind of thing, fingerprinting. They can design some advanced cooking, cooking vectors, like they look at the WebGL uh, canvas of your browser. Uh, second is that we need our system to imitate a real user. For a real user, he can understand the content of the web page. He can also uh, solve the challenge of recapture. Uh, second possible direction is we, we design some behavioral intention to address those friendly species. That means we need to study how can a human judge a benign versus a fishing web, web, website. Uh, then we need to maybe do some human subject studies, uh, study some behavioral science or psychological theory to design such an intention. Uh, our code is available on GitHub. If you are interested, you can try it out. So I think that's all for my presentation today. Uh, any question is welcome. I had a question. Oh, hi. Hi, uh, my name's Chris. I'm one of Dr. Radvu's students. Um, what APIs uh, did you use in your experiments? Uh, API, you mean, uh, for example, for the object detection? I mean, were, you uh, also... uh, were there any libraries, any specific libraries you used? Uh, Oh, okay. So for the model training, we basically have two kinds of model. First one is object detection model. Object detection. Oh, for the object detection model, we use a framework called Detectra, published by, uh, published by Facebook, I think. Yeah. So we use that to train the faster RCN model. For the classification, we use the big transfer framework published by published by Microsoft. So I think that answers your question. Mm. Yes, thank you. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. 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 So yeah, first I want to say yeah, thanks for coming in and presenting such a really great and inspired work. I really appreciate that. Um. So yeah, before I go ahead with my question, I would want to confirm: is that true? Is that correct? That to assume that when you extract like a logo or like suspicious website, you have some sort of a list of brand logo in your database so you can compare it with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we keep in total two hundred and seventy-seven protected brands. Uh, those brands are selected from the uh, most popular targeted brands in OpenFish database. Okay, yeah. So yeah, like yeah, like I expected. So I want to ask, how would you manage and handle the thing that, for example, a brand can change and redesign their logo? Say they, you know, uh, in your database you have like an old logo. How would you handle like they redesign it? It's like you crawl it, update it every day or something like that. And then also another question that like one company you can have like primary logo and then they have sub logos for to represent different division and product and services, right? So how would you uh, handle the case that where one company can have so many different logos and in... yeah. So when we construct the target list, we need to consider different versions of logos. So we go to the Google image and cross uh, every, every version and add into our target list. Uh, so for the maintenance problem, uh, I think our, our logo target list don't need to be frequently updated. Uh, according to our discussion with our industry partner, we think maybe update 
once in every two to three months, that is, uh, that is okay. That means in every two to three months, uh, you go to the company website and see whether the logo has updated, then you add it into your target list. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to jump in as well. Uh, great talk. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I've really enjoyed seeing those, uh, like the comparison you had with the previous works, right? I think it was slide 53 where you were showing uh, in the wild study, you were showing the results and like out of, like you said top 1K and there were about 937, I think that. Uh, 50, uh, uh, 50, yeah. uh, 53, I believe. Oh yeah, 938. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just one quick question. So what is the 1K here? Oh, so uh, uh, because the our system will report a similarity score. If the similarity is score is high, that means our model is confident. Right? Okay. So okay. we rank according to the confidence score, select those top 1K confident by our model, uh, by each of the model and then compare, yeah. So for visual fishnet, it would be their confidence score, like whatever the confidence score of their. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So and and essentially this is from, uh, this is from a general feed of websites that you are getting from search stream, right? So from search, yeah. stream, you looked at websites and you took the top thousand highest scoring websites, uh, for this, correct? Oh, correct. Oh, okay. So essentially then, uh, would you uh, like say maybe uh, the, the remaining, uh, how do I say, 62 are false positives in this case, right? Uh, so for fish intention, 938 uh, are uh, like, you know, uh, fishing, which means the remaining 62 are false positives, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's really a great number and it, uh, completely eclipses other work so so yeah great work um, i just wanted some clarification but i wanted to add something uh you mentioned uh like uh so having a brand and then having credential taking intentions right so you were considering two things now mm -hmm. i wanted to ask you this question have you considered cryptocurrency phishing websites like in phishing websites in cryptocurrencies so uh, are you familiar with projects like MetaMask or uh, th these are cryptocurrency projects? They're oh. like cryptocurrency wallets. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they usually require API a token, a, a token, right? A wallet token. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they try to steal wallet token, but I think mm -hmm. if you look at the front page, uh, they they wouldn't have any credential stealing things in the first. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but but still they would probably have apis that try to connect to the wallet or things like that so i mean uh -huh. i was wondering like if you could expand this to the cryptocurrency space too it would add a difference in terms of interaction mechanisms but i think maybe you could expand this to there as well yeah 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 and we also observe that for the cryptocurrency company like metamask and wallet connect our fish intention cannot report them because they require a different kind of credential, uh, different from uh, like what we have trained in our training set. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you you can see yourself expanding to that if needed, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And I think uh, the future work questions that you had were also uh, yeah uh, interesting, especially the user and the usability angle. So I, I think I thought that was interesting. Uh, okay. So in terms of, uh, okay. I was curious, uh, in terms of cloaking, have you seen cloaking, like, you know, uh, issues of cloaking in, in the real world, issues like that, or uh, uh, like you know, somebody evading uh, cloaking mechanisms, is that what inspired you to like, you know, look into the cloaking as well? I was just curious, like. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because we have observed some false negatives because of cloaking. Although not much, but we think if we can address then there's uh, another contribution, yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh,
Anyone else? Oh, if uh, oh no, I will just ask again. Uh, yeah, I I just want to add Dr. Fanny point that you want to expand it because I like, have you considered to expand your work to like software, uh, social uh, engineering, at tech in general, it's like because some of the website can have you know maybe the brand, that, but they don't have like a like Dr. Fanny said like a, a credential intention. They just like put an information like for example scam a phone or something like trying to get people to call them. Like so, so I just want to ask: Have you considered, you know, expanding the work to detect some website that in general? Um... Mm, you mean some website they they will leave their contacts and have people to call them? Right, right. Mm, I think this case is a bit ambig ambiguous because for benign web page. Uh, if they want to sell something, they may also leave their phone number, leave their email. So even for humans, it's hard to decide whether it's a phishing or just a normal site, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, I just provide a small complimentary to Ruofan's answer. So mm -hmm. here on our solution is an implementation of the text of the to detect the, the the credential taking part, but in reality, there's a lot of ways to take in the credentials. For example, ask the people to scan a QR card, and it provide a phone call, which is another channel for people to provide the other credentials. So in the long run, the philosophy of credential taking credential taking intention is still necessary, but it leave a room for new 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 works to come in to to criticize our work and design new form of credential detection approach. Yeah, thanks for that. That's really throw your work yeah, idea. And you know, I haven't thought about that, but it's really awesome. Vincent, you want to go ahead? Hello, Dr. Dr. Vajo. You know, you, I'm at my background is non CS. Possibly, my question may be, may be quite exactly related to what you are talking about. But, you know, can I ask question like this, Vajo? You know, Dr. Vajo. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, you know. So, thank, uh, thank Rohan, thanks for your presentation. So, since I'm also faculty in University of New Orleans, I'm, I'm currently taking uh, Dr. Vanjo's class in uh, computers, uh, web security, you know. So my question may 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 not be related, directly related. Okay. So how do you design your experimental test? That's my question. You as as shown in your PowerPoint, for example, uh, you your experiments start from April twenty twenty one, right? So mm. two months is the reason why. My background is non CS. I'm trying to compare the how, for example, how many hours have you spent? You have spent all this, and then for the students, what's your role here, and then what's the faculty's role here? Because my way of thinking is, so how can we manage such a huge lab? You know, because because of my non computer science background, I'm trying spending time to understand what you are doing in the computer science field, you know, so I, you know, because for my own consideration, so look like some story beyond look like what you are discussing right now. So whatever you, 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 you would like to share with me, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, sorry, may I clarify that your question is how do we design the efficient discovery experiment? Yes, because oh. As a faculty, we needed to understand and and figure out how many students do we need, how oh. we can design, what idea you may contribute to the experimental test. Possibly you borrow a lot of idea from your supervisor and then what's your supervisor's role? You know, that's, you know, that's what I'm thinking because I'm also supervising my students, you know. And mm. also I'm very interested in the difference between traditional field and the, you know, CS is so fancy. 
I'm from I'm from the naval architecture. Okay, I'm from the ship design, like boat design. I know offshore platform design is also very very popular in Singapore, right? So, you know, some difference, you know, some common. That's what I'm thinking. So, thanks, mm -hmm. Dr. Vanjo, you allow me to ask some kind of questions, maybe beyond the scope right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever you'd like to yeah. share, you know. So, uh, so uh. As for the third stream service, previously I, I didn't know this service. And um, probably have used this before. So he told me that I can get feed from this service. Uh, so then I'm thinking maybe we can just crawl the web page from there because every day they can provide around 60K web page. We may not crawl all of them, but uh, so, so why not we use these data sources? And then we, we have five solutions, so we, we will let them to process them, but some of them may be slower. So what we do is we first crawl them and store them locally, and then let the process to, let the five process to run instead of uh, four and run. So we break it into two steps because we want those five processes to see exactly the same number of web pages. Okay, then after that, we need to somehow manually verify it, right? So we need mm. to have some volunteers to vote for the reported result. Uh, we basically have a telegram, well, we have a telegram group, maybe I can, I can show you how it looks like. Uh, let me... So you can see that here. Uh, here I have a I have a robot which pushed the reported result to our group. Mm -hmm. uh, inside group we have some members. Uh, the members are the uh, final year uh, final year undergraduate students. They are doing their final year project here. So they will vote yes, no, or unsure. Uh, if all of us agree that this is a real vision, then we just pass. If they I do see. not agree, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm see. very interested in such kind of test, you know, mm. a lot of work, you know, thank you. Yeah. My mm. second question, okay, I know a lot of detail. Uh, can you can you give me some instruction, even like a suggestions on how the machine learning may be used in, in this topic, you know, because I'm thinking what I can do, I mean, in some topics in computer science, you know, so so um, I, I did learn machine mm. learning a lot, I think it's two or three mm. classes. So I think that that's possibly what I can do. So can you give me some suggestion or ideas or, because after you have done so much work, then you may have some like a deeper understanding the, the potential like a further application of machine learning in your topic, you know. Mm. Uh, I think the most important consideration in AI application is its explainability. Uh, if we use, if we just use the AI to train a classifier which output a black box score, and we, we have no way to understand that score, then that is something not what we want. <laughs> That's why I use computer vision model because we basically can visualize so it's easier for human to understand why the model makes such a prediction. And also it's uh, easier for human to, to debug. Uh, for example, when humans see two dissimilar images, they output a high score, then we may need to maybe fade these two image to like fine tune the model, et cetera, to repair the model. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, that uh, is driving me to another question, Rafan. Uh, was uh, mm. you mentioned like you had two, right? Like one was a logo detection module. Mm. Um, how was its evaluation? Like, I think I have a couple of questions. One, oh. was, how did you evaluate it? Meaning that like you, you had a training set where you had annotators annotate a few logos and and did that, 
or uh, and another one is like a more generic question like mm. how comfortable are you with the accuracy of this logo detector in the wild like say i i let le i let this run on any website in the wild how mm. good is it how would you describe as its accuracy like is it is it pretty good mm. or do you think there's scope for improvement there mm. uh, i sorry. i sorry i just want to add one more thing <laughs> I, I, i'm a little uh, curious because uh, like say in a website uh, you have all this like so sometimes you have a tweet button a like button right mm, uh, they are mm. i mean the like button of facebook is a thumbs up it's not actually facebook logo but the mm. twitter's tweet button is maybe their logo right so it's still mm. their logo but maybe it's appearing in a different form so again my question is would the logo detector be confused through due to buttons like that which are not necessarily logos but you know maybe in the logo detector you have you know a, if you one of the features is also where it is located maybe but but anyway i'll i'll let you answer it uh, from our observation the model will not confuse will not confuse the button with its logo so it's uh, actually very accurate in the world and it can also recognize the identity logo from other kinds of logo from our experiment mm. Oh, okay, that's nice. Uh, mm. Is that available for uh, like re uh, researchers like us to use the logo? Yeah, detector? yeah. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and your first question, uh, your first oh, your first question is how do we evaluate the object yeah. detector? Right? Uh, we have a separate testing set which is also labeled, mm -hmm. and okay. the evaluation metric we use is called mean average precision. Uh. Uh, so it's a, a common metric in object detection, which basically you look at uh, the overlap between your predicted bounding box and the ground truth bounding box. Mm. Okay, okay, sounds yeah. good. Um, one last thing I want to add is, uh, so I think another question I have is, uh, like e even for any phishing detector, right? So mm. for example, say Google, they don't have a website just google.com. They have google.co.in. They have google.com.au maybe for Australia, for Singapore. They have different versions of Google, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I would expect the same for any kind of benign website. So my, mm -hmm. I guess my question is, it's not simple, right, in the web to know which domain name belongs to which organization, right? So, I mean, did you experience that as a challenge like in your in the wild fishing where uh, like anywhere, maybe like uh, you go out into the wild, you find mm -hmm. a domain name, but you don't know if it's benign by itself or it's malicious, right? Because no one never made a list of benign. It, it can have the logo, but maybe maybe that web domain name has an alternative benign name. You see what I'm saying? Oh. Like Google.com has Google.com.au for Australia. It still mm. is Google logo. It still is Google, but it's an alternative one, right? So did you face yeah. an issue? Uh, I mean, I was just curious. Oh, so, uh, so in our brand reference list, it's actually not one domain. We, we have multiple domains for each protected brand because they may have alternative. They may have alternative. So yeah, we, we need to carefully check these things. Yeah. Okay, and how did you make this list? Like, was it? Uh, I know you mentioned popular domain names, but I was uh, curious. Like, yeah. How... So, for example, uh, like I I take the brand name, and I go to Google search, and then it returns many results, and you try to see what are the alternative domains, what are the oh. domains. But it's a little tricky, right? Because uh, Google search depends on the location you're searching from. Say I search from another area, I get different results. You see what I mean? Like oh, I, I think you can you can choose. Like you can choose. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I think Fanny raised a very interesting question. So it's more like the trustworthy or how accurate or how complete this reference list it is, right? So for example, mm -hmm. for, for Google's, and also there are some emerging startups, they try to register as, as many domains as possible, maybe take the credentials, taking the domains as soon as possible. I, I, we believe that we can address these two solutions. The first is that 
we need to develop a knowledge graph extension technique, which means that we try to look into the knowledge of the web and how do we construct such a knowledge as complete as possible in the future. And the second is that there will be a trade-off um, between uh, the security concerns and the convenient concern or how convenient they want to build a website or how secure, how, sec how secure they want us to verify efficient brand for them. I think there's a trade-off. Um, in terms of efficient detections, because we need a reference. So if a startup website rejects too many domains, even for human, it is very hard to uh, really infer which domain is fission, which domain is not. And the attackers might take these advantages to reject another domain, faking that it is, a, it is an alternative domain for the legitimate website. So this becomes really, really confusing even for human verifiers. So in the future, we hope that there might be a regulations or practice guidelines for these new startups. So you can reject as many domains you want, but if you do that, probably you leave some vulnerabilities for the officials to take that advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you make a very <laughs> interesting point, uh, Dr. Lin. And so in, in the knowledge extraction module you're talking about, you're referring to something like this, right? Like something yeah, yeah. extracting domain knowledge. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, so I think efficient detection is falling to the category of the misinformation detection. So we just look into a small area of misinformation. If we go broad, uh, there's a lot of the um, the other kind of areas on um, with similar philosophy, but totally different implementation. Mm. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's a really good question. Oh, uh... <coughs> And we have time for one last question and then we have to wrap up. Uh, Bupendra, I think you, we can take one last question. Sure. Um, thank you. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lin and Rufun for your time. We really um, appreciate for your time and really enjoyed your presentation and questioning all the questionnaires. Um, I am really curious on your um, future, uh, future task. Would you be able to take me to the last slide you have uh, the last slide as in, um, <clears throat> okay, so on this, on the behavioral intention part, um, during your data collection, was there any uh, phishing URL that actually uh, were doing a evading based on the uh, based on the instances or based on the automation logic that you use, um, what inspired you as a second uh, on the second intention? Uh, uh, yes, uh, in, in our experimental set, maybe there are two percent of them uh, don't have logo uh, don't have logo. The rest of uh, ninety eight percent of them they do have logo. But for those two percent, if we still want to address them, we may need some other intentions. For example, look at their behaviors, whether they have any suspicious behavior. Yeah. Okay. Was there any manual inspection being made on, on this website? What what was the kind of evading logic they actually can use? Uh, uh so it, it's like they Although they don't put logo, but they, they will have an implicit brand. For example, they say they come from Facebook, they just don't put a logo there. So the user, they, they still know that it's a Facebook. Okay. Mm. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much. I'm afraid we're out of time uh, for today. Uh, so, but thank you so much for joining you both. And, thank you. Uh, Dr. Yeah, Vader, thanks for the invitation. Thank you. Hey, Christopher. Yeah, please go ahead. I, well, I was wondering while they were still on, um, I had something in my head. Would a transformer produce better results than an RNN? Oh, CNN, you mean transformer is better than CNN? Mm. Oh, transformer, so oh, transformer usually works better for those NLP tasks. But for the computer vision task, maybe transformer is not that needed 
using the convolutional neural network can already give a very good result. Yeah. Well, um, trans transformers usually take a uh, much less time to train. That's why I was asking the question. Oh, but it's a uh, much more parameter, much larger parameter yeah. space. Yeah, transformer, if you want to train a transformer from the draft, you definitely take a much longer time than convolution layer. But the good, but the benefits of transformer, usually people adopt the adopt the transfer learning, which means that they have the off the shaft model for you to, to, to start. But basically transformer usually take a lot of parameters just uh, as mm -hmm. Rafa mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, um, you're taking the output and feeding it back into the input. Well, similar to the RNN, but um, mm -hmm. it uses the attention layers instead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mm, uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Mm, bye. Bye. bye, -bye. Thank you so much for uh, See coming. You. Bye bye. Thank you all for joining. Dr. Vadra.